The bank holiday weekend was certainly an eventful one for the Swiss franc, as we saw the Euro Swissy break the 120 floor for only the second time since the cap was set last September by the SMB. Joining me today to discuss this market movement and what it means for the Swiss economy is Dr. Frank Hollenbeck. Thank you for coming in, Frank. Hello. So let's recap just quickly now. The 120 floor level was set in September by the SMB last year in an effort to weaken currency levels, which had reached export damaging highs. Now, the rate was broken for the second time yesterday, with the first being on Easter Friday. Why is this? Well, as I indicated back in uh, January, uh, the ECB's LTRO would ultimately lead to uh, a testing of this floor. And we can see three months afterwards that uh, we're currently in a situation where we are testing the floor. I'd like to talk about sterilized and unsterilized intervention. In the case of uh, the intervention the Swiss National Bank is doing at the moment, it's purchasing euros and putting Swiss francs into the system. Now, if it doesn't want, by putting Swiss francs into the system, if it doesn't want to change the money supply, what it has to do is it has to sell bonds. In other words, by selling bonds, it's taking the Sw Swiss francs out of the system. The problem with that is that by selling bonds, it's causing interest rates to go up, which makes it attractive to invest in Switzerland. So a lot of times the economic profession, we say that sterilized intervention is uh, basically ineffective. Okay. And what we've seen from uh, the Swiss central bank's intervention has been mostly unsterilized. Okay. What we mean by unsterilized is that it's not going into the system and selling bonds to take the money out of the system. Okay. But by unsterilized intervention, what's happening is by putting more Swiss francs into the system, the interest rates are lower. Okay. And as we saw in the case of the United States in 2001, lower interest rates led to a speculative bubble in housing. And some people are talking about that in Switzerland and also probably made prices higher than they otherwise would have been during the 2001, 2007 period. Okay. Some economists have referred to this as a wake-up call for the SMB, which is currently acting under an interim head, Thomas Jordan, whilst they still decide on the success of the Hildebrand. Uh, what impact do you think that this has on the credibility of current SMB policy? Well, we have a, a current uh, SMB board member who indicated that he thought that the Swiss franc was overvalued. Okay. I have a problem with the word overvaluation. Uh, we don't say that oranges or apples or computers are overvalued. Uh, exchange rates are determined like anything else. They're determined by supply and demand. And it's a situation where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So to say it's overvalued is somewhat of an insult to people who are maybe purchasing uh, Swiss francs at the moment to protect their assets from the monetary policy being followed in Europe by telling them that they're currently purchasing something that is worth more than it really should be worth. Okay. Now, when we talk about uh, central bank intervention, uh, we have to have a situation where it's unsterilized. And for it to be unsterilized, it means that the Swiss central bank has to follow the monetary policy of the European central bank. And if we follow a monetarist model, it basically means that uh, if the ECB uh, increases the money supply by 50%, it means that the Swiss national bank has to increase the money supply by about the same amount. And uh, last year, to uh, stop the uh, Swiss franc from appreciating, uh, the Swiss central bank uh, intervened and uh, purchased almost 17.8 billion more assets than it otherwise would have. Now, although the central bank doesn't really publish how much it's intervening, we can see that in the month of March, their assets have increased by about 10 billion, uh, 10 billion Swiss francs, which means that uh, they've been intervening actively to keep the Swiss franc from hitting the floor of 120. And despite that, we've seen uh, we're currently in a situation where uh, it's breaching the floor of 120. And the thing about this floor is it's almost a one-way bet for speculators in the sense that uh, if they go against the central bank or if they bet against the central bank then uh, and the central bank caves in, then the speculators win. And if the central bank does not cave in, then the worst that happens is the exchange rate remains a 
120. So they're in a win and no loss situation. And that's why I think that uh, we're unlikely to hold this floor very long. If we look at what the uh, Swiss National Bank did in the past, okay, when it let the exchange rate go from 150 to 1, it basically made it clear that it wasn't willing to give up control of the money supply to fix an exchange rate target. And my guess is already uh, the Swiss Central Bank has probably lost control of the money supply. And they're probably panicking at the Swiss National Bank with what's happening today because of the amount of intervention they've had to do in the last probably three months. So my guess is that if we had any type of speculative attack on the Swiss franc, and I think we'll probably see it in the next month, then my guess is that the 124 won't last very long and that we'll see, we'll see the central bank let the floor cave and we may see an exchange rate of one to one in a relatively short matter of time. Inflation levels reported at 0.6% month on month last week and Switzerland has also experienced a rise in manufacturing PMI. Is this market move therefore just a blip or an indicator of a larger impact that Swiss franc rates are having on the Swiss economy? Well, I think what you're seeing is uh, is the reflection of the monetary policy followed by the Swiss National Bank. Uh, if I have to give it advice, look at what happened in Germany uh, under the European monetary system when Germany had the Deutsche Mark. Uh, during that time period, the uh, Deutsche Mark was a relatively strong currency, but German businesses still thrived. Why? Because they could be quite sure what their input costs would be. They could also be quite sure that uh, they could trust re relative prices to reflect society's demand for resources. So in other words, they didn't have a central bank continuously playing around with the value of prices. Okay. In other words, they could be relatively sure that um, money was a store of value, just like a yardstick is a measure of distance. So uh, if I have anything to say to the Swiss central bank would be to uh, focus on uh, keeping the money supply stable and uh, not um, benefit exporters relative to the rest of Swiss society. Dr. Frank, thank you very much. We'll be bringing you more exclusive interviews from the Ducoscopy TV studio. For now, though, goodbye.